Hinduism didn't exist until the British told the Indians, oh, you're all Hindus. No Hindu before colonialism had a sense of a Hindu identity. Jesus also said um, to Thomas that um, I'm going away to my God yep. and to your God. Yeah. So does a God have a God? Yes, because they're yes, not the same person. You've studied with J Jehovah's Witnesses have, have done, yes. and they have misled you. Okay. They're not Christians. They're not Christians, they're heretics. I don't think they've misled me on they, this they, side. They, have, they have misled you. So, I, I need to state right from the outset, I am not, I am not hard line on the idea of a people burning eternally in hell. I am of the opinion, personally, that people burn up in hell that they burn up as in they evaporate, they are used up in the fires of hell. I'm not, I'm not gonna put those anamorphisms onto God. But what I am saying is that the, the reason why, the reason why, the reason why it's described in eternal imagery is because it will feel like an eternity. If I, if I hold your hand in a fire for a minute, it's gonna feel like longer than a minute. Do you know what I'm saying? Yeah. So that's what I think the Bible is saying. I, I, but I also want to say that the punishment is just. And I want to give a defense of why I think the punishment is just. We both agree the punishment has to fit the crime, agreed? Okay, so... Um, Wait, I'm just asking you that question. Does the punishment have to fit the crime? As a death penalty, so let's talk in how we work as humans. You know, I have children, I'll have children as well. A death penalty, I believe, is, is the answer and that, of the worst of crimes. But like America, like it's like this... Just, just, just very briefly, sir, cause so that we don't go around the circles. Okay. Do you agree that the punishment should fit the crime? To a certain degree, as long as it don't include any torture. That, that, but, but that's assuming that the punishment... My kids, brother, lay a hand brother on. that's assuming that the punishment doesn't fit the crime. You're saying that torture wouldn't fit the crime. As bad as my kids were ever in their life. Does this so, so my question is, and you're still not answering... Brother, do you want to talk to him? Do you want to talk to him? Right, so answer my question. Don't distract from my question. Should the punishment fit the crime? That's the yes, question. Okay, answer, yes, right. Yes. So, for us as Christians, now I can. Now that we've got a common ground, yeah. let me build on that common ground and explain what we Christians believe. We believe that the the insult to the honour of God is of infinite value. So God has given salvation freely, and He's given an invitation for people to accept it freely. Yeah. If they reject that invitation that is given graciously by our ruler and our owner and our sustainer and our creator, if they rip up that invitation, they have insulted the honor of God. And that insult is a crime. The value of the crime is infinite. And so the punishment also must match the value of the crime. So that's our logic. Sure, which the death is the end of all things, which is sufficient. Um, I mean, he supports the biblical way, as I mentioned, the, he, the Sheol, the Hades, he, you know, them two words were definitely common grave. I mean, it was all symbolic, the burning was Gehenna, like the rubbish. It was just to show an everlasting death, the second death. Yeah, yeah, and, 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 as, and you're, speaking no to, you're speaking to someone who has, who's open to that argument. Good, good, good. You know? but, you know, uh, I'm glad because I think it's made God look bad that he hurts. But, but I would say, I would periods. say that we shouldn't, we shouldn't, we shouldn't allow other people's opinions to decide our doctrine. No, I we should, we should only allow our doctrine to be formed upon what's faithful to the teaching of the Christian faith. Yeah, absolutely. I've got another question which I've got a problem. Okay, with a separate, yeah, separate so question. So we okay. Can move on from that. Are you a Christian yourself? Um, okay, so I, I, I love the Bible and I love God. Okay. Yeah. I've got a problem with all religions now, and I think God in the Bible has problems with religion as well. In fact, he says, the house of Are God... Are you a Christian? Um, you know, see, this, yeah, yes, yes, I am. So you're a disciple of our Lord Jesus Christ. Yes. You worship him as the Son of God. Um, okay, so... Um, right, that's going to be part of my question about worship. 
So I've worshipped the one and only, the Father, Yehovah, Yahweh, Jehovah. Are you a Jehovah's Witness by any chance? Um, I'm not, no, but I, I, I do agree with certain aspects. Are you one of the Bible students that came out of the Jehovah's Witness movement? I've studied with them before, yes. Yeah, okay. So I, I do agree on, so there's many things I don't agree with them, yeah. a part of their religion, but a lot of their doctrines, like Hellfire and like this one, I believe they're very close to the truth. In fact, I find it biblical. Can I show you? So, can I show you where Jesus says that you should worship Him? All right. So before you do, I I, I do agree. This is where it gets complicated. Could you get some water from no, no. JC? Before you do, I know what you're going to show me. What am I going to show you? Um, I, I don't know the exact scripture, but what I meant was. Well, go on. Tell me what. Tell me roughly what I'm going to show no, you. Okay, you can show me. Let's, no. you can show are you? Me. So are you? Are you so saying you don't? Are you saying that you don't know what I'm going to show you? No, no, uh, well, you mentioned that uh, scripture where, you know, we, um, that we worship Jesus, which I'm, I can accept to a certain degree. So I want no, to no, 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 so do, do you know what I'm going to show you, or you don't? No, 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 I can just have a look, yeah. I'm asking you, do you know what I'm going to show you? Not the exact scripture, no. So. All right, so, okay. thank you. Because there's a few, which you... Yeah, there, there, there's, yeah. there is a few. Yeah. But I wanted to clarify my idea about it first, because it is a bit complicated, I'll be honest. But yeah, please. So I'm just going to show you where Jesus says, worship him. Okay? Right? I'm not disputing it's not there. So, thank you. So, as a Christian, as someone who takes the Bible seriously, you should do that, right? Sorry? Oh, yeah. yeah. You should do it. So if, the, so if the Bible says that you should worship Christ as you worship God the Father, that's what you should do. Sure, but there's a... There's a time and place. I believe we're going to worship him during the millennial reign. So what, let me clarify. This is where it gets complicated because we're dealing with, you know, this deep theology that's been debated for a long time. But for the sake of brevity, I want to, you know, we don't want to go off on a long one. Um, what I want to say is, have you heard of the word called tertium quid? No. Nope. Tertium quid. Okay. It go, I won't go into it, but it goes back to Tertullian and where there's an idea where the devil... That's the truth. He cuts the truth in half and he gives it to two groups of people, okay? Like, say the Trinity, he'll give it to the ones who believe in, um, you know, Jesus is God and the other group to the Jehovah's Witnesses who believe Jehovah is God and is separate and there's an Almighty. And he does that because then, you know, they bang it all out and so on. But then tertium quid means, and what Tertullian was trying to say is, look for the third other. So try to take the truth from both camps, so you're both right, we're both right, but there's a third other, and that's right. what I want to come okay, to. Okay, so what, what, I, I haven't yet, but what, I what, 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 what I'm saying to you yeah, is that, you, yeah. you've, studied, that. you've studied with J Jehovah's Witnesses, have, have done, yes. and they have misled you. Okay. They're not Christians. They're not Christians, they're heretics. I don't think they've misled me on they, this they, they, have, they have misled you. Okay. They, they're, they're heretics, and it's an American religion. It, it's it's not fine. it's an American let, uh, let me let me finish that they're an American religion that we can't find anywhere in history We don't find them in the 1500s. We don't find them in the year 1000. We don't find them in the year 500 Like they just they, they're a they're a novelty of American spirituality They were not Jehovah's Witnesses They, they were not with you. No, they were not Jehovah's Witnesses Jehovah's Witnesses, Jehovah's Witnesses are connected to an organization called the Watchtower. No, I agree. And this is why and, and I, they're I'm not, led away from and, it. Yeah. I believe the devil's got and, and the thing oh, is, God has used and the them, thing though, is, and, the, and the, the thing is, the, father, which many the thing is, and the thing is, they, they've misled you in understanding that you shouldn't worship our Lord now. And I want to give you a biblical case to say that you should worship our Lord God now. Jesus Christ now. Okay? So... In John chapter 5, verse 22, it reads, For not even the Father judges anyone, but he has given all judgment to the Son, so that all will honour the Son, even as they honour the Father. Now, how do you honour... Who is the Father? Okay, who, who is the Father? Yeah, let's just think this passage yeah, through. The Almighty God. The Almighty yes. God. And how do you honour the Almighty God? Um, well, when Jesus was on here, oh, yeah, by um, honouring the Son, as it says. Right, so you honour... The Almighty God by worshiping Him, right? Um, you're... By worshiping, well, this is where. Can I give you the supporting? Can I give you a cross reference? That's no, no, we're not doing the Jehovah's jump around the Bible trick. Let's think through no, this passage the and then. Like 
okay. we'll we'll okay, yeah. we'll go to your passage okay, fine, yeah. when we thought this one through. Yeah, okay, okay. How do you okay. honour the Father? Okay, so can I read that one more time? Yeah. Mind? Yeah, thanks. Um, for not even the Father judges anyone, but he has given all judgment to the Son, so that all will honour the Son, even as they honour the Father. Um, okay, he does not honour the Son, does not honour the Father. Okay, but honour and worship, I mean, you're inserting a word worship. <laughs> honouring, like, okay, I'm honouring you, by, we're honouring each other. Right, do you know what the word worship means? Well, yeah, so worship... Um, it's a good question what you're asking to sort of, yeah. What, what, what does worship mean? Um, worship means giving literally, um, that's a very good question when you think about it. Because I've always... What always, does the word worship mean? I can't think straight away of the exact definition. Shall I tell you what it means? It means to give due honour. Right? To give, wor the, wor the word worship means to give due honour. So when me and you shake hands, that's due honour, as and man to man. And worship. Th th worship that's an act of worship, yeah. So it's right, an act right. of due right. honour. Right. Okay. So the honour, right. so listen, good, good. listen. So the honour that is due to you as a man is obviously not the same honour that is due to God as being God. That's right. That's right. right. So Christ said, honour him as you honour the Father. Now you said the Father is God Almighty. Yes. So how do you honour God Almighty? Okay, so, like, yeah, uh, again, this is still a grey area because um, you're, you're just, you're, it's still a big jump. That's why we need support. I'm just We're, asking you, how do you honour the God Almighty? Okay, so, as we said before, yeah, by honouring Jesus, um, by no. worshipping, by worshipping. Right, but, but the level of honour, exactly, yeah. the level yeah. of honour is the issue. Yes, that's because true, yeah. the, the honour that I give to a queen yes, yes. is more than the honour that I give to you. Okay. The honour that I give to a judge sure. is less than sure. the honour that I give sure. to a queen. Sure. The honour that I give to a policeman okay. is less than the honour that I give to a judge, but more than the honour that I give to you. The honour that I give to a child is less than what I give to you, but, it, but it's less than all the other groups. Now, yeah. one second. The honour that we give to God is unique to himself, is it not? Absolutely. Right, Absolutely. but Jesus is saying, honour him as you honour the Father. And he's saying, if you don't honour him, you're not honouring the Father. Sure. So you're commanded to honour Jesus Christ in the same way as you honour the Father. So I'll ask you again, Please. don't dodge it. How do you honour God Almighty? Do you not give your life to him? Um, oh yeah, 100%. As a living sacrifice? Uh, absolutely. So you do that for Jesus? Okay. Do you not sing his praises? Sure. Do you, do you not sing his praises? Then you should sing the praises of Jesus. Sure. Do you not? Do you not live your life according to the word you're of the right, Father? You're right. You're right. You're right. Okay. But I'll tell you what my real problem. Is. Right. So now that we can go yeah. to your other verse. No, no, yeah. But the real, oh, your verse, another, oh, my one. Your, your other verse. But before I do, uh, yeah. Thank you for all that because we learn. Yeah. Um, my real problem as well is that they're not the same. See, this is where Trinity gets complicated. And they're not the same being. Okay. That they're separate. And this is where it gets a bit That's not actually what Christians okay. believe. Mm, okay. Christians we'll come believe. To that one as well. No, no, you've oh. just said some. Uh, I need to correct you. Okay, come you've on. just said that the Father and the Son are not the same being. They're not, no. Jesus is exactly the same being as the Father. Okay. That's sure. what we Christians okay, so believe. That they are one in being. Okay. Do you mind for you? Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, while we're doing that, do you mind if I bring in some Greek ones that's relevant to this? The word, yeah, in Greek, in the original yeah, Greek of the New yeah. Testament, the word that yeah. Jesus uses in Greek yeah. to refer to as, as you want to refer, or sometimes it's translated as even as, is katos, katapos. Katapos literally means according to as, according to how you worship the Father in the exact same way that you the Father you want to make. So whatever you do to the Father, you have to do to Jesus. So one, one no, so one, one I do agree with all that, but I just want to separate, you know, God and Jesus. They're not together. Trinity, I believe, is a um, a man-made doctrine. I was Hindu before, and we have the Trinity. One second. Vishnu, the, yeah. So, so, so let, let's just deal. Let's, yeah, let's just deal let's with that. Deal with so, so firstly, we need to be clear about what Christians believe. Christians believe that the Father and the Son are exactly the same being. Okay, let's look at my scripture. Can we be clear about that? Yeah, yeah. So okay. that's what we're arguing against. Okay, let me find the scripture. Yeah, talk to me, bro. Oh, they're, 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 they're talking. Me, that's why. Yeah, so yeah. I want to talk to. Microphone's here, though. 
Ah, okay, yeah. So you can Hopefully talk that way. Me, if you talk there. that way, no one's going to hear you. If, if you talk YouTube, this way, you're going to be heard. So right. go on, what, where, where are we going? Okay, let's go to 1 Corinthians uh, chapter 15. 1 Corinthians. 15. 1 because, Corinthians. Because look, I know Chapter you guys 15. have debates and there's so many scriptures, but this one is so powerful. I don't think many people go into, so I want to share something okay. maybe a bit Wait, Which new. passage? Right, let's start. Let's, where shall we start? Where shall we start? Okay, let's start at 20. Okay. And let's read that slowly up until, not that, going up to maybe about 28. 20 to 28. Okay. So you interrupt when you want to make a point about what he's saying. But now Christ has been raised from the dead. The first fruits of those who are asleep, for since by a man came death, by a man also came the resurrection of the dead. For as in Adam all die, so also in Christ all will be made alive, but each in his own order. Christ the first fruits, after that those who are in Christ at his coming, then comes the end, when he hands over the kingdom to the God and Father, when he has abolished all rule and all authority and power. Let's stop there for a minute. Okay, let's so do we, that. So we can don't forget points. Yeah. Yep. So why, if, if, they're, if they're the same, so that I think is talking about, um, so yeah, Jesus hands back the kingdom. I, I, I believe he's going to have to the Father for a millennial reign. It's more than a millennium. Really? It's weird. for eternity. Hmm. Daniel well, chapter for seven. Eternity, so why then does he hand it back? Great question. Yeah. So let, let's just think about this as Orthodox Christians have thought about this text for 2,000 years. Not like the American religion known as Jehovah's Witnesses. Well, not, actually, so, you know what? I never, so, I never learned that one so, from Jehovah's so, Witnesses. So, that was just so, reading, you know, just so, 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 yeah, but this is the danger of reading the Bible on your own. Because if you read the Bible on your own, you can misunderstand what the Bible says. Well, um, I've read it with others. See, every that, great, every answer, great heresy is a yeah. biblical let one. Let me answer that point. The, uh, there's a, it's a double-edged sword because there's indoctrination as well and that can be a problem for ones who read the Bible with a religion as well so it's a double-edged sword there's yeah you're right that is true a and there's a, yeah absolutely there's a right as well of isolating us. There, there, there's there's problems both ways which is why it's incumbent upon you if you take the Bible seriously you have to connect with the community that wrote the New Testament the community that wrote the New Testament is my community like it's 2,000 years. Yeah. It's 2,000 years old. You can trace it through history. You can see its line cutting through history. It's the historical church. That's can the. I make a note of it? Yeah. I will, I, when I leave, finish this because that was my other thing. It's called. It, it's called the church. One Holy Catholic and Apostolic Church. I'll forget that at the end. I'll, uh, okay. Yeah. But let's let's just read this passage as Trinitarians, yeah. because what you said is this passage is why is he handing the kingdom to the Father? Because I said that Christians believe that the Son and the Father is the same being, which is what we believe. Which I disagree. Right, yeah. but, but I also believe, and maybe I should have stated this earlier, is that I don't believe they're the same person. So I don't believe that the person of the Son is the same person as the Father. So it's quite possible here for the person of the Son, having accomplished all things, to hand it all to the Father, because he has now conquered all things and achieved all things and then the father as it says in Daniel chapter 7 and I can go there for you if you want but we'll deal with your passage first yeah yeah it, it says that the son of man shall ascend unto the ancient of days and he shall be given a kingdom for eternity so the ancient of days receives the work of the son the accomplished work of the son and then gives back to him the kingdom and so you have this movement of the accomplished work of the Son being given to the Father. They're not the same person. The They're not the same person. I didn't uh, say that. No, you're right, you're right. That's where I'm, I need to get my head around. Yeah. Like, yeah so, we, so, so let me give you an we example. Can two, we can be the same being, but two separate persons. And I'll give you an example to help please, you. Please, please, yeah. You exist in three-dimensional space. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Each dimension is distinct from the other dimension. Yeah. Each dimension is not the same as the other dimension. The parallel, the horizontal, sorry, the, the vertical, the X, Y, Z axes, they're not the same. But they're all a dimension. So they're all the same thing, but they're not the same. And that's kind of what we believe with the Trinity. They're all the same thing, but they're not the same. See, this is the whole problem with Trinity. People have tried to... Again, the microphone's here. Yeah, sorry. People have tried to explain it away. If you just talk to me, it'll pick you up. <laughs> cool. Um, yeah. 
people have tried to explain it in so many different ways and just confuse the matter and confuse God, you know, who God is, his nature. That Let's keep it simple. Father and son. Why did even God say father and son? And when we were handing back the kingdom, you don't just hand it back to yourself. No, he doesn't hand it back to himself. So they ask, He hands it back to his father. But they are... The same being, but not the same person. I'll be honest. I know you gave me that um, analogy. I'll have to hear it. So many, this is the problem. Think about it again. Jesus likes to keep things... Thinking so about it. No, no, no. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. This idea yeah, yeah. that just keeping it simple, right, is, is what we need to do. Sometimes things are not simple. Sometimes... Jesus said, oh, can I... Can I sorry. Are we going to do this thing where we interrupt one another? So sometimes things are not simple. The Trinitarian explanations that are given by the church are a deep philosophical meditation upon what the scriptures teach. And there's nothing wrong with that. Now, I want to be clear. You don't need to understand the Trinity to be saved. So in that sense, we can keep it simple. To be saved, you don't need to understand the Trinity, but you do have to believe in the Trinity. Where we prove it. Shall we, shall we continue with your passage? Yeah, maybe, Is um, there more you wanted to draw out of this passage? Um, oh yeah, yeah, it gets even better. Okay. It gets even better. So, wait, 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 where were we up to? Just, uh, Animal die, first fruits, yeah, comes, yeah, hands the kingdom to God and Father when he has abolished all rule and all authority and power. Right, so that's what I mean about he accomplishes his work, he gives it to the Father, then the Father gives it back to him for eternity. For he must reign until he has put all his enemies under his feet the last enemy that will be abolished is death, subjugation under his feet. But when he says all things are put in subjugation, it is evident that he has accepted who put all things in subjugation to him. When all things are subject to him, then the Son himself also will be subjected to the one who subjected all things to him, so that the God may be all in all. This is my problem as well. Why would a God subject himself to himself or to a... Uh, why is Jesus subjecting himself to Almighty God unless the Almighty is superior? Like Jesus said in, before, the Father is greater than I am and he's saying, well, he subjected himself. And the scriptures to say even like Jesus, ha he, he was given life in himself, meaning he was always reliant on <laughs> God, even for life until he was... He was destructible before Jesus was, yep. until he was given like the almighty life in himself but i'm going off on so so let me let, let me read this as a trinitarian because you, you, you know this is the thing we christians have read all of these passages there's no surprise here for us for those of us that know the faith so listen what well, no 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 let me go on say one more thing but that's only because you've been nice now and you as well and i really i'm grateful go on this is where I've got the problem with explaining things in a trinity sense. I'll tell you why. Look, I come from Hinduism. One thing, bro, one thing. Say, Make bro. one quick point. I will, I will. Um, you know, it's a pagan teaching, okay? When I was a Hindu, you know, there was Brahma, the creator, uh, Vishnu, the preserver, and then um, there was the um, Shiva, the destroyer. Egypt, there was Isis, Horus, and yeah. Osiris, and yeah. there was... Um, look, for sake of brevity, look, yeah, you're right. Look, so <coughs> right. We can't, so let me let me reply to this. Let me now. Now you've made your points. Let me reply. Yeah, please. So, firstly, Trinity is not pagan. That is a, a a ridiculous comment to make. The Trinity emerges from the most monotheistic faith known to man, Judaism. Those guys are obsessed with the idea that God is one and that there's only one God. And Christianity is a branch of Judaism. So the idea that Trinity is pagan is completely it's ridiculous. Pagan. Ah, sorry, did I interrupt you? Don't interrupt me. Otherwise, we just get into a shouting match, and I promise you, I can shout louder and longer than you can. So, in terms of what it's saying here, right? Trinity is not pagan, and you need to prove that it's pagan, not just claim that it's pagan. That's the kind of rubbish that the Watchtower teaches. It's not the kind of thing that any learned person would teach. Let me finish. This scripture you've raised, why does God subject himself to God? What you've done there is you've confused the persons. You just replace son with God and father with God. We say that the son, having accomplished all things, subjects himself to the father. Why does he do that? Why does he do that? He does that because at the Incarnation, remember what it says in um, 
the Carmen Christi, that not grasping at equality with God, he humbled himself, became a man even, and suffered death, even death under a cross. Remember what it says in John 17. Now, Father, glorify me with the glory that I had with you before the world was. So there was this equality of glory that Jesus had before the incarnation. When he has accomplished all things and handed the kingdom to the Father, as it says in Daniel 7, the Father gives it all back to him and he rules in God's stead on earth. So he rules as God's representative, and that's what's being talked about here. It's because of the incarnation. It's because that Christ has a human nature. He hasn't got rid of that human nature. No, I agree, but I don't think that he had a nature of God. He weren't God. See, no man can see God and live, okay? And God cannot be flesh and blood. Um, that's why he had to send his son um, to be his word, because we don't, we can't hear God. He needs a spokesman, that's why we, we have to witness for him. And that's why Jesus was called the Word of God, even though they were one in thought, spirit and purpose and so on. And being. <laughs> well, they weren't, because you mentioned John 17, 3 a minute ago. Yeah. Even that shows, look, there's so much of this <laughs> that I'm gonna, we're going to get lost. But even what you just said, John 17, 3 even says, um, taking knowledge of the only true God. Yeah, first, yeah. And... That's one God. Yeah. And then, and then the Son, who you send, yeah, um, to have everlasting life. So, you know, it's like the Lord's Prayer. You know, we we would praise, "Hallowed be Thy name, of the Almighty God." This look, this whole three in one, and come on, it's just uh, it's it's the devil's game <laughs> to confuse and obscure who God really is. It's a man-made teaching. Again, you've asserted that, but you haven't proven that. Um, well, we're looking at references. You, you've just, so you've just asserted that. Let, let, me just, let me just read something to you from um, Titus. Let me just find it. Bear with us. Okay, no, take your time. I'm enjoying the clapping over there. <laughs> yeah, the brothers have a... Uh, so here, here's... You, you pointed out, you pointed to John 17, 3, where it says... Um, that they might know you, the only true God, speaking of the Father. Yeah. And we Christians have got no problem with that verse. That verse is what we believe. We believe that the Father is identified as the only true God of the Old Testament. Right, but listen to this. In Titus, it says, looking for the blessed hope and the appearing of the glory of our great God and Saviour, Christ Jesus. Now tell me, who is the great God and Saviour of Paul the Jew? Okay, um, so we need to look at the context as well okay. uh, and not isolate the scripture. Yeah. I'll be honest. Um, but firstly, who's, who's being identified as God in this passage? Okay, let me read it one more time. Um, so, looking for the blessed hope and the appearing of the glory of our great God and Saviour. I don't know, this, this, this is the thing. I, I don't know where to go with it where we can just keep it so... Um, it's again brevity, isn't it? I just want to show you yeah, that you should worship Christ as God now. Not wait until a fictional millennium reign. <coughs> says here, After eight days his disciples were again inside and Thomas with them. Jesus came, the doors having been shut and stood in the midst, and said, Peace be with you. Then he said to Thomas, Reach here with your finger and see my hand, and reach here your hand and put it into my side, and do not be unbelieving but believing. Thomas answered and said to him, so he's talking to Jesus, My Lord and my God. Jesus said to him, because you have seen me, have you believed? Blessed are they who believe and have yet not seen. Okay. So who's identified as God okay. there? So in the context of what um, Bob just read, it's Bob, isn't it? Or yeah, Robert? yeah, Bob. Um, sorry, Bob. <laughs> Jesus also said um, to Thomas that um, I'm going away to my God yeah. and to your God. Yeah. So does a God have a God? Yes. Because they're yes, not the same person. They're not, okay. they're they're not, not the, the same, same being, person. They're the no, same they say being. they are the same being. They're not the same person. I still can't get my head around that. <clears throat> I know you explained it before, and maybe I'll so let, 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 let's just let's just think about it again. Being yeah, the, 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 I'll give you an example. You I'll, I'll have exa I'm going to give you an example. No, I am going to give you an example. So, in terms of dimensions, right? Using the x y axis again. 
X, Y, Z. One second. Would you agree that X is not Y and Y is not Z? Yeah. Would you agree that X is a dimension, Y is a dimension, and Z is a dimension? Yeah. yeah. Right. So we can have something that is the same in one way, but different in another way. And that's what we Christians believe about God. Father, Son and Holy Spirit are the same sure, in being, sure, sure. but okay. different okay. in person. But the reason why I've got a problem with it is because it's like a whole game of charades <coughs> with Jesus. It's like... Um, no, it isn't. He actually nullifies, he nullifies the most famous scripture ever about where God loved the world so much yeah. that he saved, sent his only begotten son. No, it doesn't. Um, I'll tell you why. Let me explain why it nullifies. Go on. Because... First of all, we all appreciate what Jesus did for us. He gave his Microphone's life. Microphone's here yeah, again. Sorry. He, he gave his life for us. He died on a cross for our sins and so on. But we always forget what the Almighty God did, who suffered having to send his only begotten son. See, we forget Can, that can we pull up the passage? Is he sending himself and is it all so, a So listen, because you're not, you're not listening. All heresies, I did, I did. All, all heresies share two things in common. They either divide the divinity or they confuse the persons. This is why the church had a council at Nicaea to give us guidance not to do that. So yeah, let me finish, are we gonna do the interrupting? No, shall no, I just no, speak no. over you and shall I speak louder? So stop interrupting, I did not interrupt you. So in terms of, in terms of the scriptures, the, 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 the fences that we Christians need to add discourse about God to be in is not to divide the divinity, otherwise you end up with more than one God and not to, de to confuse the persons, because when you confuse the persons, that's when you get all the kind of confusion that you've got right now. You're confusing the persons. And so you say, why does God, um, why does God send himself? But we're not saying that, we're saying the Father sent the Son. We're not saying that God sent himself, we're saying the Father sent the Son. But you're saying they're the same, um, they're... Same the being. Person, the same being. They're the that's same being. Why... It's confusing. Because so we go back to X, Y, and Z. Because here's the yeah. thing, bro. What's your name? Tiku. Tiku. Here's the thing, Tiku. Yeah. When I use dimensions, you got it straight away. Of you got it when I spoke about dimensions. So if you can get it when you speak about dimensions, the only reason why you're saying it doesn't make sense now is because you've told yourself that the Trinity can't make sense. But when I gave you a Trinity in dimensional space, you had no argument or problem. So if you can get it in dimensional space without an argument or a problem, you have no excuse to say it's confusing when we're talking about God. No, because there's a lot more than dimensions with God. We're talking about like feelings, personalities and, and real powerful things. Like I said, he sent, you know, his only begotten son and all that empathy and, you know, feelings. He's given his son up. And, and I think, well, if it's all in the same being, yeah. it's like charades. It's like, um, was Jesus talking to himself on earth or is he, and he's telling... Wait, 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 again. Listen, like, engage with what I'm saying. Would a Trinitarian say that God is speaking to himself? What would a Trinitarian say? Well, he's, well he's talking to his father. He's, we would say that the son is speaking to the father. So the you thing. didn't need to ask that question because we've already answered that question. So now, so again, when I showed you an example of of unity and multiplicity in terms of dimensional space. Yeah. You had no argument against it. Sure. But let me just show you why as Christians we have to believe that God has only one being. Right? Deuteronomy 6.4. Right? Read that for me. Yep, sure. So, hear, O Israel, the Lord is our God. The Lord is one. You shall love, love you the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your might. Here's my question. The Lord is one. One what? Um, the Lord is uh, one creator, one almighty, one God. Yeah, one. There's no, there's no plurality within that, is there? Sure, no. Right. So therefore, this is why we Christians believe that since the Father is identified as God and the Son is identified as God and the Holy Spirit is identified as God, since there can only be one God and one God within himself, therefore, Father, Son and Holy Spirit are one in being. 
Okay. Do you know what it is? It's this lovely conversation and um, there's so much to the Trinity, isn't there? And I think people have different ideas about the Trinity, isn't there, between Christianity and, and people do get confused and some believe um, some parts of it and so on and so on. And I think that's why Jesus came to the earth and, you know, God, and he kept everything simple and called his father, father. You know, he wanted to speak in human terms and he used the son. And we think of like a father and son business. Is the father eternal? Um, yes, absolutely. Yeah. Does God change? Um, he doesn't change. Has the father always been the father? Um, yes, absolutely. Who was he father to? Um, he was father to... So... He's only begotten son uh, Jesus first. Uh, so, so if he has always been the father, mm. which you said that he was, and he's never changed, that means the son is also eternal, correct? Okay, so let me answer that one. This is where it gets quite interesting that I mentioned before. <clears throat> the almighty God has life within himself, okay? Meaning he's undestructible. So at a point in time, Jesus was <laughs> destructible, okay? He, 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 he didn't have life within himself. You can look at um, <coughs> the scripture, for example, in um, uh, John chapter 5, and he talks about Jesus not having life in himself. He was given that, meaning he had to earn that. From can, his can we see that, please? Yeah, that's, I think it's in John 5. There's many scriptures that say that. Where, where, where yeah. does it say that Jesus was destructible? Okay, so... John chapter 5. Let's have a look at that. I think that's... Uh, I, I, I want to make it clear to you. We Christians don't believe that the divinity... Not divini anymore. Not anymore. So Jesus we Christians... Is not Jesus has life within <coughs> We Christians don't believe that the divinity is destructible even in Jesus Christ. Just so you know. Okay. So in this current so, time, so where, where, Jesus... Where does he say that he is destructible? life in himself now. Sure, sure. Okay. sure. Let, so let's have a look. This is a bit about um, where the resurrection happens. Oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. So 28, 29. I'm sure around here... Um, if my memory serves me correct, there's a bit that talks about life within himself. Um, where is it? Even to yes. he gave to the son also to have life in himself. Yes, so the father yes. had to give Jesus. Yes. That. And that's only one reference. So, this, so is, this is what we call, this is what we call the eternal generation of the son. This is an example of why Christians believe in the eternal generation of the Son. <coughs> so this is why you need to get familiar with real Christianity. Well, sorry. Okay. <coughs> well, I have been trying. I've been trying to get to source, pollen. You know, pollen. Oh, the pollen is kicking Jeez, my ass. Oh, okay. This I'll is why I asked for water because the pollen is just. <coughs> You know what a cure? I used to have the same problem, magnesium oil. Okay, I'll, I'll check that out, but listen. Natural antihistamine. <laughs> this, we'll is, this, is, this is my thorn in the oh, flesh. Oh. I accept it for the by the grace of God. So listen, this is why Christians believe in what's called the eternal generation of the sun. Sure, sure. <coughs> I'm sorry, I'm really sorry. JC. Be the same. Yeah, pollen is kicking my ass. Have we got, I need some, anything, anything to wash it down. Oh, so I've got, <coughs> yeah, have this one, it's not been opened. Thank you. You're very, you're very kind. Oh, right. So, uh, flipping it. Right. So here we go. So it says, right, and you, you're right to point it out. Even so, he gave the son also to have life in himself. We both agree that the father is eternal. We both agree that the father is unchanging. We both agree that the father is eternally, eternally being the father. The logical question is. Who has he been the father to? And your mind went to Jesus Christ. Now, let me explain. And then to let, me explain. And to let me explain. Let me explain. Let me explain. This is why we Christians, when we do the deep philosophical yeah. meditation. Yeah, 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 thank you. That's no good for you, Red Bull. Yeah, 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 I know. And it's his favorite drink. Yeah. When he, the, the, when he does, the, when we do, the church does this deep philosophical meditation on the scripture. This is why the church talks about the eternal generation of the son because the Son is begotten of the Father. All that the Son has comes from the Father. It proceeds from the Father. It is of the Father. That's why the Council of Nicaea says, God from God, light from light, true God from true God. So yes, Jesus is right to say that he has life in himself because it comes from the Father. But it is this eternal thing because Unless you are willing to accept that Jesus Christ is also eternal, you can't say that the Father was always the Father. But if you accept that Jesus 
is the eternal son of the father, then you can say that the father has been eternally the father. And so the life of the son is caused by the father, but it is caused eternally outside of time without beginning. Okay. <coughs> so, with that, <coughs> this conversation going, it's been lovely learning from each other, but my, my, I'll tell you my real problem is this whole fourth century and the early church fathers, a lot of, see, if we look at, Microphones here. Yeah, sorry. <coughs> I've got a problem, yeah, with the fourth century, the early church fathers, with a lot of the adopted <coughs> doctrinations, you know, from evidence. And, because evidence being that even before then, it, it, the scriptures were they were pure and they were sound, and this doc, these all were borrowed from evidence. That's why we see because I mentioned Hinduism before and I mentioned the Egyptians, they all say the same thing. And no, they don't. Firstly, let's be clear about the history of Hinduism. Hinduism is an invention of British... Trinity, Hinduism is an invention of British colonialism. Hinduism didn't exist until the British told the Indians, oh, you're all Hindus. No Hindu before colonialism had a sense of a Hindu identity. There wasn't a unified religion called Hinduism until the British educated the elites of India and said, so you're they Hindus. They practiced the devotion. They, they practiced the devotion to Shiva. They practiced devotion to... Um, so it was just labeled Hinduism. It just there wasn't a unified identity. There were different kingdoms with different devotions to different gods. It's the same thing we're talking about Christianity. Look, there's one faith... One you, haven't, you haven't given any evidence that the Trinity is something borrowed from paganism. Because where's the word even Trinity in a Bible? Like, there doesn't need to be. The word theocracy, one second. The word theocracy yeah. doesn't appear in the Bible, but we believe that God should rule. Is there a Hindu Trinity? That's what I was saying to you. Yeah. There's Brahma, 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 Brahma. There's no such, there wasn't any such thing as Hinduism at the time of Christ. That was my point. That was question, yeah. yeah. That, there was Brahma, the creator, and the Vishnu, the preserver, Shiva, the destroyer. Yeah, Shiva. Shiva. There's many religions with Trinity. That's why I'm saying. And, and firstly, again, you've people. again you've misrepresented. Sorry, bro, are you are you done talking to me now? Oh, yeah, sorry, yeah. Do you want to go and talk to him? No, no, no. Right, let's yeah, keep sorry. our conversation going. So, firstly, firstly, Hinduism, firstly, Hinduism has a multiplicity, a, a polython of gods that are all the one consciousness on, right? That's not Trinity. That is not Trinity. The idea that, that is within Hinduism, within Hinduism, within Hinduism, within Hinduism, it's, it's, there, there are as many as you can think of. There's thousands of them. Right, so, so the point is, so the point is, bro, if you want to join in this conversation, you're gonna to have to learn to be polite. Right, all right, I'm just gonna to talk to you. So. In terms of, in terms, right, you talk to him if you don't want to talk to me. Right, so in terms of, in terms of what we're talking about, yep, in terms of what we're talking about, you're, 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 you're making a false equivalence for multiple reasons. Firstly, I challenge the idea that there was any unified Hindu religion or identity before colonialism. Secondly, I challenge the idea that Hindus had a concept equivalent to the Trinity because even modern Hindus don't have the idea of three in one. Some Hindus, not all, some Hindus have the idea that it's millions that are one. Not sure. three that is one. Surely so, you see the artifacts, you know, with the, in the British Museum even, you see the God, it's all three in But one. you haven't made the connection, you haven't proven that Christians took that from Hinduism. All you've done no, is I assert it. Because I tell you, so I, where I, is your I'll evidence, you right where you right is your evidence I'll that we you took right it? Now. Who did where we take it from? It all goes back, religion all goes back where? No, the Trinity, Babylon, the yeah? Trinity. The one, everything goes back to Babylon. So okay. you're saying that there was a Trinity Tower in Babylon? Well, well, look, we can trace it everywhere. Where, 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 right, so trace it for me. Show right, me the proof, show me the proof that Christians stole it from paganism. No, uh, look. Or do you want to say that you're making a claim that you can't prove? No, I mean, look, I'm, I'm gen we are, gen I am generalising. You know, we're talking just about... 
everything wrong with certain, you know, this is what Jesus warned about, all these doctrines that will come in, because they could foresee, you know, there was Babylon, there was one faith, one Brother, you, 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 need, you need to come to historical Christianity, right? Stop, stop being a lone spiritual soldier out there, yeah? I want to right. find out about the church for sure. Look, yeah. I, I do believe though, before I say that, I do believe the house of God will be judged first, as God has said, before he deals with the nations, as he always has done. Yeah. Like for example, Jerusalem, God put his name on the temple, came down, he, yeah. he dealt with his people first, because I think we've got a lot to answer to and we're going to find out. We're all in, looking at things in a hazy way until the fullness comes, you know. Jesus. I'm, I'm just about to do a talk on the Trinity. So if you want to listen to it, but what I, yeah, I and I suggest you listen to it because I'm I'm going to explain the deep philosophy of it, right? But as, as a gift, because you've been such a pleasant guy, I just want to give you, oh, thank you. Okay. something to have a read, to have a think about. And, and, yeah. and what I want to say yeah. to you, bro, is that I, I, I get you, you. You come across as a sincere guy, and I appreciate that. Likewise. And and I appreciate yeah. the fact that you take the Bible seriously. And but but well, yeah. but what I want you to do is I, I want I want to encourage you to learn about historical Christianity. Because so far, your prism of understanding the scripture is obviously clearly influenced by an American religion that's less than 200 years old. Shall I tell you what the real problem is? Is second, the most powerful scripture, which not many have read, I'll be surprised. I'm sure you have read it, but not thought about it. Second Thessalonians chapter two. Okay, let's read it again. Um, okay. <laughs> I'll tell you why it's powerful, because Apostle Paul is warning the corruption of all religions and his own people being deluded and God allowing this. We all, we all, if we're God's people, there's a delusion. Why? Because 2 Thessalonians 2 says, the devil will sit on the throne of God, like a Trojan horse, yeah? Attack us from the inside. And, and that's what's happened with the Jehovah's Witnesses? All religions. No, where does it say all religions? Where does it all. say the church? Well, okay, I'll tell you where. Do you can see no, 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 here, here. Oh, yeah, yeah, we're going to look show at me, it right show now. Me. I'll show you right now. Show me, show me. I'll show you right now. Right, do it. I'll do it. Well, I'll right do it. now. I'm good to know. Don't Go on then. Say it there. Don't say it. <laughs> you, do you consider yourself um, God's people? Yeah, Christians are God's people. Okay, so if you do, then uh, let's read Second Thessalonians with that in mind. Yeah. Chapter 2. Right, let's see where we're going to start this from so we don't read too much. Um, Okay, let's just start from the beginning while it's not a big chapter. Look, look, yeah, shall I or you want to read it or...? Go on, read it. Shall I read it? Okay. So it's called Man of Lawlessness. So now we request you, brethren, with regard to the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ and our gathering together to him, that you not be quickly shaken from your composure or be disturbed either by a spirit or a message or a letter, as if from us, to the effect that the day of the Lord has come, let no one... Which is what Jehovah's Witnesses do. True, true. This is why I think, this is a side thing, that they have been used by God in a certain extent and why um, this only points to them, which is fascinating, but that's yeah. another subject anyway. Carry on. And then the only religion is used God's name. Let no one uh, in any way deceive you, for it will not come unless the apostasy comes first and the man of lawlessness is revealed, the son of destruction who opposes and exalts himself above every so-called God or object of worship so that he takes his seat in the temple of God, displaying himself as being God. Do you not remember that while I was still with you, I was telling you all these things and you know what restrains him now so that in time he will be revealed for the mystery of lawlessness is already at work. Only he who now restrains will do so until he is taken out of the way. So, where, where is this all religions? Yeah, yeah. Again, uh, again, uh, um, sorry, if you carry on, it's gonna, it's coming, it's coming. Where, where? Find it for me, where? Uh, let's carry on, I'll carry on reading it. Um, then that lawless, then that lawless one will be revealed, whom the Lord will slay with the breath of his mouth and bring to an end by the appearance of his coming. That is the one whose coming is in accordance with the activity of Satan, with all power, signs and false wonders, and with all the deception of wickedness for those who perish, because they did not receive the love of the truth so as to be saved. For this reason, God would send upon them a deluding influence so that they will believe what is false in order that they all may be judged who did not believe the truth but took pleasure in wickedness. Sorry, where, where's all the religions? Okay, so it's talking... So, can, can, uh, yeah, okay. can, 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 yeah. can you agree 
that it makes a distinction here in verse 12 where it says in order that they all may be judged who did not believe the truth yes, yes. so it's talking about those who believe the truth and those who don't believe the truth right. so there are those that believe the truth right yes but there's a truth of the truth we think we know the truth no okay? that's gnosticism no well I tell you a why. truth within the truth is Gnosticism. I'll tell you why. No, do you agree that there is a group of people that believe the truth that are not deluded? Well, according to that context of that chapter 2, so the devil sits in the temple of God, so in God's own house. Yeah. No, I'm not asking about that. I'm asking about verse 12. Uh, I only mentioned Do you believe... talking about his own people, his own temple. His where, own, where does it say that here? Because, um, it, it, it's talking about the world. The, um, no, it's talking about he, hey, the you? devil... Um, coming into so apostle paul's warning about his um about god's house well god's no apostasy Apost within ah, so well, well, once, apostasy means apostasy means those who leave the house ah, this is where it gets interesting apostasy normally relates to a group or a, yes a, 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 yes then those that yes yeah, so they leave individual. so it's a group apostasy that leaves Apostasy will come from religion no it doesn't where does it say religion here uh, okay so what it says so in context of second thessalonians 2 2 god's talking about um so his own temple his own house yeah where the devil that is what apostasy sit, is the devil will sit in the, on the temp on the throne yeah, of but god. if they have apostatized they're not part of the how the tr community of truth anymore are they well, no, would you agree that those who have apostatized are not part of the community yeah, of truth? Well, when the judgment comes. So no, 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 no. In the delusion. In the great delusion. Oh, I'm talking to if you. you right, yeah, if you stop talking to me, I'll just talk. No, no, I'll, I'll talk yeah. to you in a minute. So the great delusion, the great delusion affects those that have apostatized. But do you agree in verse 12? It's always been Do you agree in verse 12 that there is a community that believe the truth? Okay. Um, Verse we, twelve. Yes, yes. Answer the question. Yes, yes. But we all Is believe, there a we, answer the question? We all, we answer that. the question. Yeah. In yeah. verse twelve, yeah, yeah. is there identified a group that believe the truth? Yeah, because we all think we yes. know the truth. Right now, think on this. But there's a truth of the One, truth. No, no, no. That's Gnosticism. Comes. We only know hate. That's that's Gnosticism. Wait, does the scripture say we only that, know like in a blurred mirror until Apostle That truth is not something that we have access to, so it's not our concern. It only appears when Christ appears. So now we're agreed that there is a community that follows the truth. Think back to Christ's promise to his church with Peter. What does he say in Matthew 16? Um, when Peter gives the confession, you are the Christ, the Son of the living God. What does, Pe what does our Lord reply? I remember, sorry. He no, said, I Peter, I name you the rock, and upon this, sorry, yeah, he says, Simon Barjona, I name you Petras, and upon this Petras, I will build my church, and I shall give to it the keys to the kingdom of heaven, and the gates of hell shall never overpower it. Amen. So there will always be a community of the truth from the time of Jesus to the present, yeah, yeah. which means Jehovah's Witnesses, not the group, because they came 200 years ago. Mormons, not the group. They came 200 years ago. Nation uh, Hebrew Israelites, not the group. They came seven, they're, they're, nah, well, we'll talk about them. Well, we said that before, like Jehovah's Witnesses was a label. I mean, when we go back early days, I've said we were all witnesses of Jehovah, even Abraham. And we all no, 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 no. You're you're trying to say. It became a. You're an trying to say. You're trying religion. to say. You're trying to say that all religions will be deceived. Yes. I'm and I'm telling you that that's not biblical because the Bible identifies a group that stands on the truth, and Christ promises His church that the gates of hell will never overpower it. Okay. So you make a mockery of Christ's teaching. Well, uh, if that was so true, then why did he destroy his own temple? Not once, not twice. How many times did he do it? Like Jerusalem. Because the new covenant doesn't require a temple. Because all that, because in Hebrews, if you read Hebrews, Christ completes the law. And also in Galatians, Christ completes the law. So those aspects of the Mosaic yeah, Covenant... We don't need a temple now. Exactly. So that's why God allows his temple to be destroyed. It's, it's because that temple is the people of God. It is, and I believe in that, and we're a church and so on and so on. No, no, no. We're a church. 
until you accept the Trinity and worship and honor Jesus Christ as the Father, that's you're not part of the church. A, that's where it becomes a problem, isn't it? Because Je Jesus the, said, if you don't honor him like you honor the Father, you don't honor the Father. Sure, but um, see, this is where separation and this is where divide and, you know, the devil dividing comes. Jesus in, divides. divides. Jesus said, I've come that a father sure. might, that a son might turn against his father and a daughter against their mother. Sure. I haven't come to bring peace, but a sword. Sure, sure. And he who chooses his mother or father above me is not worthy of me. Sure. And he who loves mother or father before me is not worthy of me. Sure. Jesus divides. Sure, but there is one faith, one Lord, and we're meant to work together. Christians should work together, yeah. I agree. And, and ultimately... It, but it, the question I'm asking you yeah. is, are you a Christian? No, but you can't just say, unless I believe in the Trinity. See, this is where it becomes problematic. Anyone unless who doesn't I, believe in the Trinity isn't a Christian. Uh, there's a big problem with that. A big, big problem. I, I, you know, it's always been the faith. It's always been the faith. We'll leave it like that for now. We had a, a long and good conversation. Right. I'm going to be wanting to come here like every Sunday anyway. I know you... Well, we'll, we'll talk some more. I'm just about to actually. Yeah, it's the one holy Catholic and apostolic church. And is it just here? Like, I'm no, it's all over the world. Okay, so one the you can you can find the one holy Catholic and apostolic church in every city. Let me write that down then, because uh, I'm going to forget when I get home. Uh, is it on this booklet the name? Uh, no, no, no. I've just told you the name. All you need to do is find an ancient holy Catholic and apostolic church, or any church that's a derivative thereof. Okay, I'm just about to do another talk and then I'm stopping. Okay, thanks guys, yeah. It's nice to talk to you, bro. Talk, talk some more. Yeah. How are you doing? So, bro, uh, bro, I'm just about to do a talk on the Trinity. I'm Bob. So, guys.